Hello everyone, I'm back. And I am way behind on my videos posting them. I probably have half a dozen to a dozen sitting in queue. Uh, so I may bump this one up, just go ahead and update it, upload it so you can see what the uh, current progress is. And then as I get time, I keep thinking that I post, or I'm sorry, I record a video uh, every day or every other day, depending on my progress. And then I keep saying, oh, at the end of the day, I'll go ahead and put a caption on it and a title and all that stuff. And uh, by the end of the day, I'm tired. So I don't, haven't done it. And uh, my fault, I've just gotten way behind. So again, this one may jump ahead. All right, so here's what I've been doing. I took the C8 to C2 body parts and made uh, mold off of them and then actually made uh, the body panels. So here's a uh, fender, a passenger side fender, and then the driver side fender. Uh, they're not the same because the shop that took off, they cut off the front end and they damaged it. You can see the bottom right there is pretty complete. That hole is where the uh, C2 turn signal went. There is no such turn signal on the uh, Grand Sport. So I cut it out. You can see I actually partially uh, molded it and then uh, cut it out. All right, so there is the fender flare. The fender flare came from that damaged mold and I just went ahead and sanded off the orange uh, gel coat that stuck to it. Uh, I'll hit it with some primer to smooth it out. Uh, it's only for test fitting and visuals. So it doesn't need to be uh, perfect. It just needs to be, let's call it a 20 footer or whatever. Um, so what I'm doing with this, there's a nose piece I also made. Again, it was just a quick splash uh, to figure out how wide the front end needs to be. So I did that. Um, it's going to go away. Uh, but what it does is it lets me know where that edge is. Ideally, I will screw those two pieces together where there's a gap right here. Obviously, this gap shouldn't be there. Um, so at some point, I'll screw those together. Um, but I don't want to put any excess holes because that fender is the actual fender uh, that's going to go on the car. So I don't want to put any uh, unnecessary holes in it. So what I'm doing is on this side, I am going to leave the back like it is and then uh, contour the front end of that, leaving that step that's right there. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the light, but anyway, there's a, a step right there. And it's because the C8's a bit wider, so it has to at some point uh, come out. Over on the other side, uh, when they cut off the fenders, they cut the whole front end off the car, which I wish they would have done, because they could just unbolted it but anyway they decided it was easier for them uh, but they damaged that bottom section so on this one instead of uh, keeping that step because they damaged that step area uh, I am going to put a flat panel uh, to tie the two together and then uh, I'll let you and me and whoever else decide which looks better uh, I don't know in my head either one will look fine but Maybe when I get it out there, one will look significantly better than the other. Now, it's kind of hard to judge what the front end is going to look like. I mean, you can get an idea. I know because I have been doing this a while. But I'd like more of the front end, which initially I didn't think I would need it. Because I made an entire nose piece, but I took it to the shop so that uh, they would have it. I could go get it, but instead I decided, you know what, I got all the mold stuff, so I might as well do it. So, I am making a new nose piece. The difficult part of the nose piece is doing the headlight area because it's so got so many curves and bumps and all that stuff, and it's really hard to get the fiberglass to lay down in there. Uh, even the guys at the shop <laughs> mentioned how difficult this area is to do on the Grand Sports. They, actually said they hate doing it because it is so difficult so it made me feel better that you know I'm challenged with it and people that do it for a living are challenged with it as well anyway um, so I'm leaving off that but it's gonna have all of the bottom part this is a gel coat I put on it uh, this is the mold that got damaged uh, I was trying out a new way of just using mold release instead of 
wax and PVA and other stuff, uh, not a good idea. What happened was the, uh, the initial splash mold, initial part, I'm sorry, the initial part, had some areas that, no, it's, it was a splash mold, I'm sorry. This mold had some areas that were not great uh, when I made it. And so I decided I would sand it smooth and say, hey, I'll get a better part out of it. Well, unfortunately, every place I sanded is where it stuck. Now, after I sanded it, I uh, used rubbing compound with a buffer, and then I used a polishing compound. Uh, I did not wax it, and then I used the uh, mold release. Uh, the instruction said, put it on there, let it dry for five minutes and go. You can see it didn't work on this side. Now, the other side though, in contrast, rather than fix the areas that didn't look so great, I just put aluminum tape on top of them. And you can see that, yes, it did stick in a couple of spots, but nowhere near as bad as it did over there. After that, I decided, you know what? It's not worth the risk of having a damaged part and a damaged mold. I mean, this would have been a reusable mold if I wouldn't have messed that up. So now what I've been doing is I have been, uh, I don't sand unless it's just absolutely necessary. Uh, so what I do is I uh, use the rubbing compound, I use the polish, I wax it, I use the release, and I use PVA. Doing all of those, the parts just come out really, really easily. Uh, the hard part is these edges. i not real good or haven't been taking a lot of time getting these edges crisp. And so they do tend to stick a little bit. So I'm always careful not to overlap because if you get it overlapped, then you'll essentially uh, glue the edges together. I wish I had put the silver tape on here, but I didn't. Uh, the other thing I found out is in some cases, the uh, aluminum tape uh, still the stuff still sticks to the aluminum tape so from now on I'm going to wax the aluminum tape uh, to prevent that from happening it's always people have said it's an option I decided it's not an option anymore it only takes a couple seconds and uh, it's worth the effort uh, when I wax I this one I did not uh, wax take the wax off I put the wax on and instead of taking it off I just left it um, I did spray a heavy heavy coat of PVA actually a couple coats of PVA. Oh, that's the other thing is I also, I wax it twice and then uh, do two coats of the mold release. And that's been working, like I said, very, very well. Um, so anyway, this is the uh, gel coat. It's been on for, I don't know, half an hour or an hour. So it's still wet. Yep. So when it's ready, you should not come off on your finger. I probably should move this out into the sun, which I might do in a little bit. It'll speed things up. All right. Um, here's the fender that came off of the car. Uh, initially, this is before I got to it. Uh, it is not an accurate uh, transport. Uh, it has the little nose piece here on the outside of the headlight, which the transport does not have. Uh, and it's obviously been damaged. It also, uh, the turn signal is not in the right spot. It's closed, but it's not right. But at least the fender opening uh, is in good shape. So I could make a splash mold of this, uh, but you can see it's kind of beat up. And so ideally I would want to fix it. I've decided from now on, I'm just going to fix things uh, before I was just trying to get the stuff as quick as possible. And so I would just typically just make a splash mold out of this. Uh, I would spray PVA on this so the two parts don't stick and then just make a mold and then make a part off of that. Uh, instead, I think I'm gonna go ahead and fix things before I do that. Uh, so here is the front end. This is the actual grand support front end. And this is what I was talking about. See on the outside, the headlight goes flat all the way to the edge instead of having that curved cap on each end. Um, the mold is in okay shape. I'm sorry, the part is in okay shape, but it's got a lot of areas like this right here where there was air pocket underneath uh, between the gel coat and the fiberglass. And uh, I don't know. There's a lot of sharp corners and any one of these could be hiding 
um, a bad spot because you can see that they're all over this thing scattered. Uh, it just means they didn't take their time when they made this part, uh, but it means I have to spend a bunch of hours on fixing this that I had not intended on doing, so it's put me way behind schedule. This is uh, time consuming work. All right, and then it's got areas like that where uh, this has been sanded. I'm trying to get it, uh, find all the defects and fix them like that right there. That's something on the surface. Uh, so I just did a quick sanding job just to see what everything looked like. So the sanding started because there, this was a multi-piece mold and there was a part that came out here and then the, the mold came here, so it was two-piece. Well, where the two met, there was gel coat all along here, and there was a sharp edge. What they did was where the two met, the seam, they didn't fill it with wax. That's one of the things you can do. You can fill it with wax, so you don't have to do as much after uh, mold processing. Well, they didn't do that, so I went to go sand to get rid of that sharp edge, and when I did, it just started, the gel coat just started flaking off. So obviously there was a huge air pocket behind this. Uh, honestly, they shouldn't have sold this part as many defects as it has. This area right here, it's gotta be fixed. The same thing happened there. The gel coat came off because uh, the fiberglass was not pushed against it solidly enough. There's a corner that got chipped. There's another piece that got chipped. There's another one. So part of me was debating whether to just go ahead and use that blue piece and remake this since it's in significantly better shape or to fix this one. Uh, consensus on my fiberglass group is fix this one. So uh, it's a t coin toss. Um, anyway, so that's what I've got to do. That's what I'm doing today. Um, what I'm going to do is I decided to get a piece of cardboard put it all along uh, this edge right here, sticking out to where it's even. I'll trim it so it's even with this. I'll probably use my um, fiber editing cutter. And then I'll come in with some, I've got uh, body filler that is fiberglass reinforced. And so I'll go ahead and uh, fill in this. I'll make it back into a square and then decide whether I wanna leave it square or uh, round it. Because this is the final part, I can leave it square. If I was gonna make a mold off of it, then I would round it because those 90 degree turns are always gonna be an issue. Um, so I, initially, this is what I wanted. I wanted just enough, I would match the radius here. This radius was already there. So I tried to match this radius, but then when it started flaking off, the radius got bigger and bigger because there was that air pocket and this is bigger than I want it to be. Uh, I was warned by the uh, Grand Sport people, replica people, that these tend to crack along this edge. So they said, be careful if you make this thinner. So what I'm going to do is come in the backside and uh, reinforce that. Okay, let's see what else do I have. Um, all right, so my goal for today is to get this mocked up enough that I can see better, we can see better what it's going to look like. Uh, ideally throw the uh, C8 hood on top of it and then throw the Grand Sport hood on top of the C8 hood and that will be as close as I can get to what it's going to look like uh, when it's finished. Okay, so the difference between the hoods is this is the C8 hood. It has this unusual shape to it. Uh, and then the uh, Grand Sport has a rectangular hood edge. Let me show you that. So see, you can see this is basically a big rectangle. Um, I would love to be able to use the rectangle. What I'm afraid of is that there is something on the area, I'll call this a wing, uh, on the corners of the wing on the C8 that you need to get to and that you would not be able to access uh, if I squared this off or made this into the, the big rectangle because that back edge is a lot wider. Won't know until I get it in front of the car, which is again, another reason why I'm doing all of this. 
Speaking of which, the reason I'm doing all this is the shop is way behind. There's less than two months until uh, the Street Ride Nationals, this car's supposed to be done. I'm questioning whether they're gonna get it done. They've had it for nine, 10 months now, and it was supposed to be a three month job. Uh, they just plain are not making it a priority. So by dropping this off, I just knocked a month off of uh, their work and it's taken me, I guess a week, maybe two weeks. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, I've got to have this car done no matter what. All right, I think that's got everything. Um, so anyway, here's my molds. Since I spent the time to make these better molds and use the mold release, these are actually good molds. You can see the fenders that came out of these are, it's not perfect, uh, but it's close enough that, you know, uh, and again, what I'm going to do is once this is all done, a mold has to be made off of this. So this is all going to be straightened out, looking nice, painted, all that. And then after the uh, Street Ride Nationals, I'm going to have molds made off of this. I may scan and then uh, CNC carve uh, the molds. I don't know. Uh, that's a future thing to look at. All right. Um, oh, so the PVA, uh, the smoother you can get it, the better. Uh, one of the reasons I was trying not to use it is because I can get the inside of the mold looking like glass. I can't spray the, the PVA to look like glass. It's close, but it's just not quite there. So what I was looking for was something like, I'm not using a spray, uh, I'm using a, well, a squirter, and um, then using a foam brush to smooth it out as much as possible, so it gets pretty good. Uh, but I've been looking for something that would spray uh, mist. And so I've got various, I've got a squirt bottle here. Here's the top of it. And there's a bottle around here somewhere. Uh, it does okay, but it's still, there's a stream that squirts. Uh, uh, I've got another one for something. Uh, it does, there's the, the bottle. Uh, the other one does okay, but again, same thing. It doesn't really do it. I need a mist. There is the uh, PVA, Parl Film 10. Uh, it's a green liquid that when you spray after it dries, it takes 30 minutes or so to dry. It dries into a, a plastic-like film, but it's water-soluble. All right, so I saw this chemical guy, sprayer, says does everything from mist to spray. Well, it doesn't mist. All of these that I use, if you're doing water, it mists just fine. But anything heavier than water, the PVA is almost like water. It's a little bit thicker than water, but not a whole lot. I mean, it's still, you can see it's, but that little bit of difference is enough that uh, it doesn't spray a mist, it kind of squirts. So I can't get a, a nice smooth even surface, which is why I have to touch it up with a, uh, a foam brush. Uh, I've been using different waxes. Up until now, I've always been using this high temp, a hard mold release wax. Uh, but I decided, somebody said that they used another one. Uh, they actually use Mother's cleaner wax and um, so I went and got this uh, they didn't have mothers but this is McGuire's uh, the key is supposed to be to make sure it has carnauba in the uh, ingredients and let's see oh I thought this one had uh, carnauba in the ingredients but I don't see it Oops. Oh, well. Anyway, it's been working great. And it's way easier to spread than the, the harder stuff. All right. Um, that's all I've got. Here's, oh, here's the front end. And again, you can see where all that orange is. The orange, either the orange stayed on, which is tooling gel coat, stayed on the mold or it came off. The gray is regular gel coat and it either stayed on the part or it came off. And so you can see that some area has the gel coat, some area has a tooling gel coat, and some area the uh, gray, gray gel coat came off. So what I did was I cut that section out and that's what I put on the uh, fender over there to mock up. 
Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. Uh, you can see it's here. Uh, I already, this is where I was going to splice all of this together and then decided since those fenders came out so much better, I'll just go ahead and use them. Uh, but here's some areas that are really bad. I was not trying to get this vent area because I knew uh, I wasn't going to use it. It's the, basically the spinner is going to be cut off right here for the C8 because this wheel well got moved back that far. So I didn't worry about it, but that's what happens if you're not careful uh, to make sure there's not any air pockets. Um, and while we're here catching everything up, because like I said, I don't remember the last one I put out. This is the C8 uh, to C2 body that they cut off. It was pretty rough. It's still not great. Uh, it was a lot rougher. I just ran a sander off over it and got the worst of it uh, knocked off so that the mold was in better shape. Uh, that green is the PVA. Uh, so this has been dried on there, but it, when it initially is there, uh, this would peel off as a surface. But when I pulled the part out of the mold, uh, or the mold off of this part, I guess, uh, I flooded it with water because again, this stuff is water soluble. When you do that, it takes about 30 minutes to soften up the PVA. So you can't rush it. In the past, I was rushing it. Uh, if you just leave it alone, flood it with water and let it do its work, uh, it works a lot better. Here's that fender opening. Again, this came straight off of the uh, C8. This one sanded smooth, real good. Like I said, with the release, new release process, this part just popped off of here. All right, that's all I've got for now. So go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the alert, hit the thanks if you want to. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't know Jack. Bye.